Levy here. And today I thought I would take a few minutes to go over MRI of the lumbar spine with you all. It's a very common exam that we see here at AMI and one that takes 15, 20 minutes in total, relatively painless, but gives us and your referring provider a lot of information as to what may be causing your lower back pain or any other signs or symptoms that could be related to your lower back. So let's get started. So first case I'm gonna show you is a um, younger patient who presented with one week of severe lower back pain radiating to their left leg. And just to orient everybody, we have four different sequences here. These, so this sequence here, the one on the bottom left, the one on the bottom right, these are all sagittal images. So again, we're looking from the patient's side and these are slices going across the, the patient from right to left. This image here, I'll magnify, this is an axial image. So up at the top is anterior towards the patient's front. This is the patient's back. This is the patient's right-hand side, the patient's left-hand side. So by having both of these um, planes, we're able to uh, better see anatomy and better triangulate if we have a finding um, exactly where that is located. So. So toward, this is towards the patient's head, towards the patient's feet, and this is the lumbar spine. I'll just magnify this. This is the, these are the lumbar vertebral bodies. So there are five lumbar vertebral bodies. This is L1, L2, L3, L4, and L5. When reviewing a lumbar spine MRI, I always want to have the same approach. And so um, for me, I start with the alignment of the lumbar spine. Um, so we look at the alignment here, we see that there's normal lordosis of the lumbar spine, and this is sort of the um, angulation that we all normally should have or typically should have. We then look to see if there's any um, malalignment if any of the vertebral bodies have shifted um, anteriorly or posteriorly relative to the lumbar vertebral body below them. In this case, we do have a little bit of uh, anterolisthesis or shifting of, the, of L5 relative to S1. Um, we take a look at the bones and make sure that there's no mass or uh, metastatic lesion or there's no fracture. This is a uh, fluid sensitive sequence and we can see here the marrow looks very healthy, normal, no evidence for malignancy, no fracture. Um, we then look at the spinal canal. So here's the spinal canal. This is the cerebral spinal fluid. This is the inferior aspect of the spinal cord, known as the conus medullaris. And then we see the spinal roots, uh, which extend further down. Um, and then we'll look for actual disc pathology, look for degenerative changes. And so in this patient, there's a significant finding here at the L4, L5 level. So here's a normal looking disc right here. Very well hydrated, normal fluid signal. Again, normal looking disc here, normal looking disc here at L3, L4. And then we go to L4, L5, we see that there's loss of the normal disc height. So hopefully you can appreciate the distance between here is less than the distance between here and here. The disc is desiccated, so there's not as much fluid, and we see this large disc extrusion, which has extended from the normal disc space. It's extending um, uh, posteriorly, and we'll show you what that looks like here on the axial image. So here's a more normal level. You can see the normal cerebral spinal fluid, or CSF. We see the normal spinal roots. Here's where a disc would be. There's no disc bulge or extrusion. Then we go down one more level. This is a huge disc extrusion, which is causing severe central canal stenosis. It's impinging multiple um, nerve roots, specifically at this level. It's the uh, left L5 nerve root, and that correlates with the patient's symptoms. She was having um, radiculopathy going down her, her left leg and severe, um, severe pain. So... A uh, nice example of a large disc extrusion um, at the L4, L5 level. When we go to the L5, S1 level, we also see there's a disc bulge with an additional um, 
protrusion as well, which is right here, sort of a central or left central protrusion. Um, but, you know, for sure, her pain is related to the L4, L5 level. We're also able to see very well the neural foramen. So um, oftentimes we'll have disc pathology of protrusion, which goes out into the neural foramen here um, and can impinge any of these exiting nerve roots, but that's not the case with this patient. This patient's symptoms were related to this large extrusion, uh, which was more centrally located. Let's take a look at another patient. So this is another patient who has a history of cancer and was having back pain. So again, these are our sagittal series. We see three different sagittal series. And then we have our axial series, which enables us to correlate at different levels. And the main finding here is not related to disc protrusions or extrusions or disc bulges, but instead due to these numerous uh, darker lesions in the marrow. So remember, I said, we always want to have a systematic approach. We start with our alignment. The alignment here looks good, uh, healthy alignment. Next we go and we look at the bones, we look at the marrow and we see that the marrow here is not normal. So um, these round dark spots are, um, are abnormal findings. This is a patient who has a history of cancer. And so um, this is a patient who has metastatic disease or cancer, which has spread to their lumbar spine and to the vertebral bodies. And pretty extensive, here's the largest lesion in vertebral body L2. Uh, we are looking to see if any of these lesions have caused a pathologic fracture of any of the lumbar vertebral bodies or if it's extending into the spinal canal or um, epidural space and can compromise the spinal cord. We don't see that here, um, thankfully, but we do know that this patient has metastatic disease now to the lumbar spine, and we can pass that information along to their provider and to the patient and can, and can um, potentially alter their treatment. So hope you found this interesting. Uh, two examples of um, significant findings in uh, two different presentations um, and uh, an exam that we see very commonly here, an exam that um, you know, yields uh, important information for both the referring provider and for patients. Hope to see you again soon. Until then, take care.